This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi, it's Kathleen, and today we're going estate sale shopping, but it's not just any estate sale. This estate sale has art supplies out the wazoo. And I'm an artsy gal. What could be better? But first things first, we gotta get some cash. We gotta get that bag and get to the sale because I'm already late. And it's thanks to you and YouTube that I can even get this money out right now. That's right, this is a self sustaining endeavor at this point. Eh. Money, please. Thank you, AdSense. Thank you, sponsors. Okay. 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 Wow. Always have to get the last word, don't you? Now I can buy some stuff at a house. Um, I mean, if we're already late, should we get coffee before we go? Okay, don't twist my arm. Okay, we're here, and I see fashion girlies. It's always a good sign. Okay, raise your paws in the comments if you've ever been to an estate sale. It's one of my favorite ways to find nicer home items that really feel like they have some history or a story to them, because they do. They were owned and presumably loved by someone, maybe more so than something you might find at a thrift store. And I'll say this now, I think it's important to be extra respectful at estate sales. Not saying you can't have fun and enjoy yourself, but oftentimes estate sales are a result of someone's life ending or a big transition in their living situation. So there's a certain gravity to it, you know? It's clear that whoever lived here was an art fanatic. And as a fellow art fanatic, I really appreciated it. Literally every room had copious art supplies of every make and model, especially vintage stuff. But specifically there was a ton of dip pens and ink. Like more than one person could ever use. More than a small army of children could ever use. I don't know why children are using them, but I mean, let them live. So I think we could take a guess at their favorite art making medium. I also really loved seeing the actual art pieces in the home too. Some of the walls were hand painted. There were sketches and canvases everywhere. This portrait was my favorite thing I saw in the preview pictures. Look at their faces. I love the expression that the artist captured. I would have totally brought this home with me if I didn't already have a, a stack of canvases and artwork that have been waiting to be hung in my own house for years literal years. So I'm curious, as an artist, this type of estate sale was like a dream for me. So what type of estate sale would be a dream for you? Maybe vintage clothing that happens to be your exact size? Niche collectibles that you thought no one else collected? Let me know down in the comments. Y'all, I found some goodies and I'm actually going back in because um, I bought the plan. Okay, what do you want from me? <laughs> You know, I was just about to leave, but there's something that I saw in there that I don't think I can leave without. I'll be right back. Porcelain palette. I think it still has paint in it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Are you stuck? You got it. You're brave. I know you're brave. Okay, I'll help you. Here's what I got, plus that. <sighs> when would I learn? <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> I don't know why, but I'm feeling kind of ornery right now. Don't you just feel a little sassy sometimes? Do you want to see what I got? I want to see what I got. I've literally have not looked in these drawers because I wanted to do a little mystery box unboxing, un undrawing. And then afterwards, I figured we could actually try and make something with these new supplies. Oh, itchy. Does that sound fun? If not fun, does it sound tolerable? That's what I like to hear. I got two pins. There was so much specifically like pen and ink equipment there and i really like using pen and ink it's a really nice drawing technique and exercise because you get this really nice quality to your lines you get to work with ink which can get a little messy and crazy and also look at this i've never used a pen like this i think it's gonna it's gonna do something it's either gonna make a really thick line or like a striped line we got a couple little bottles of ink now you saw at the sale that they had like full sets of colors too but they were like sets of 12 and it has nice as it would be to have a full set i just don't think i need 
that many colors, especially when I haven't even used them yet. So how do I know if I like them? Anyways, it's also kind of fun to get a mismatched set that we can explore with. So we have a purple transparent watercolor. We have an ultra blue radiant concentrate watercolor. I'm excited for this one. We have a transparent watercolor in the shade Rose Matter. Spooky. I'm also excited about this one. Grass green. Oh, oh, this one's empty. I could have sworn I checked all of them before I got them. Well, that would have been wild rose great and another one i'm excited about daffodil next i actually ran back into the sale after i got into the car because i saw this and i was like i've been wanting one of these and why not get a cool vintage one instead of buying a new one we have a porcelain painting palette that has somebody's name etched into it annette reynolds oh and I tried to look this up. I thought maybe this was like the brand name, but I think this is literally the name of the person who owned this palette. I think they had it customized. Anyways, if you've never seen one of these before, got a bunch of little paint pots in there. You can also mix colors in the lid. I've only ever had like plastic palettes, so this feels like a nice kind of bougie level up. I am a little scared of these pigments. Uh, they are quite old, so I'm not sure what types of poisonous materials lay in wait for me. So we're gonna um, use gloves and a mask and depot these and clean them out before moving forward. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I saw this little mid-century storage bin and I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted. It looks like a little mid-century dresser with the little peg legs. Are you kidding me? This was $20 and it comes filled with stuff. I would have just bought it empty for that price. So let's see what's inside, shall we? Shall we? But before we get into this mystery unboxing, let's quickly hear from today's sponsor. Let's talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. It's time to make things official with just a few clicks. Whether you're making an art portfolio or a small business shop, or maybe a fan page about your dog. You can build a page using beautiful pre-designed templates and structures for specific purposes like a portfolio or a blog, and then customize to your heart's content, including, but not limited to, the Fluid Engine, which is a super intuitive technology that allows you to drag and drop your content and assets with ease. And maybe that's more than you need. Fine. Keep it easy breezy with a simple and cute bio site. You can bring together everything you do on the internet and everything you share in one easy link. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash kathleen illustrated for 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain thank you squarespace now on with the show the frick is this cool wow what are you <gasps> That ain't the cutest little seam ripper I've ever seen. We've got snaps. We've got, um, blades? Paper clips, tiny pins, sewing machine feet. Ah, oh, these are for a singer. This is a brother household. What are you, I'm gonna guess, more needles? Tiny little nails. Wow, this is just sharp things unlimited, isn't it? What are you? I don't know what this is. You can, you can pinch it? If anyone knows what this is, let me know. Some tweezers, some big, beautiful pins. I know exactly the blueberry for you. <sighs> and some teeny tiny little screwdrivers. I think these are for like eyeglasses or just tiny little things. That's actually helpful. We've got um, a, mag a magnet guy, a magnify, er, tiny pencils. What are these? <gasps> oh, this is worth it just for these guys. Look at them. Oh, they're so tiny. Oh, these are dividers. I was wondering what these little guys were. You guys excited? <laughs> this is fun content. Also, that's my chair squeaking. Not my butt. Next, more sewing supplies. <gasps> is this an owl? An owl? Ah, ah, AOL? An AOL instant messenger? I think it's an owl, which is great for making holes and things. I think this is a punch rug or needle point. Um, Big needle. Is this like a tapestry needle? You tell me. Another screwdriver. Oh, this is what, this is the thing. The easy stitcher. Make sewing fun. Cool. Oh, I can't wait to try this. Wow. We got tons of little pins. I don't really need the pins, but I do like these little containers. Wouldn't they be cute to hold 
something in. The bottom has bigger tools. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda scared of getting stabbed. Uh, more needles. Caster votes now if I'm gonna get tetanus by the end of this video. Ooh, what's this? A sewing gauge. Some pencils. That's, that's a weird pencil. And this teeny tiny little guy. Ooh, I love him. Oh, so I need to decide, uh, you know, what I wanna keep and where to put it all because I wanna use this for something else. But that sounds kind of boring, I'll say it. So for now, we put away the boring stuff and let's play with these. Quite a bit of ink. Best. Dip it in. <gasps> oh. Apparently, this type of nib, it's a folded nib and it's used for manuscript, lettering, calligraphy. And with this size, it would be used on like a poster. But I've also seen people use it for really expressive lettering, but also just sketching. It was described as a very expressive but challenging nib to use. So we can just use a corner, or we can use the whole width. Oh! Interesting. Let's draw a real thing now, okay? She's back with a voiceover. This is gonna be a long one, so make sure you have a snack, a little drinky. If you have a Squishmallow, go ahead, go get your Squishmallow, I won't tell anyone. So I figured we could have a little catch up while I experiment with these new, to me, art supplies. First of all, when in doubt or when I don't know what to draw, I usually opt for flowers. You can't really go wrong and it's a great way to loosen up since shapes are so organic. Great for beginners and pros alike. It used to be people that I would draw if I didn't know what else to draw, and I'm not sure what changed. Maybe I'm just out of practice. I think that is actually the case. Speaking of, I know I call myself an artist. It's in my blood, it's in my bones, but I am really rusty. And I'm not saying that to be self-deprecating. It's just, you know, a fact, it's okay but it's a fact that I hope to ameliorate over the next few months. You see, I've been thinking. ruh -ro, she's thinking again. And I know a lot of the videos I've made on this channel seem to focus on style and fashion, but really at the core of how I think about personal style is creativity and art. And I know I've said that before, it's a broken record, but I say it because it's true and important to who I am. So I would love to start, or I guess continue, to foster this kind of artistic and crafty energy on the channel. That doesn't mean I'm gonna become a, I don't know, speed paint channel, not at all. I don't wanna do that. I still wanna make videos about style, but I want to even more so incorporate creating and artistic expression in everything I do. I want to paint on some more clothes. I want to design some of my own pieces. I want to try new mediums. If you're up for it, keep an eye out for more creativity to come. And of course, we're still going to thrift. There's nothing better than a mic'd up at the thrift store to heal 
all your woes. Also, I wanted to chat about work-life balance. I talked about balancing a full-time job with a YouTube channel alongside normal life in my thrifting in Brooklyn video, and I was honestly really surprised and touched by how you all responded to it and shared your own struggles with balance. You may have noticed that I've been taking a bit more time and been a bit more sporadic with uploading in the last few months and weeks, and I just wanted to say thank you for allowing me the space to do that. And not that you allowed me, but you encouraged me to take care of myself, and I really appreciate that. I think we have a pretty cool group of folks here on this channel, and I consider myself super lucky. I'm pretty excited because the next two videos are going to be a creative roller coaster. I think. I haven't filmed them yet, but uh, from what I can see so far, it's gonna be wild. First of all, I have a ton of things on my crafty to-do list, like some Christmas commissions and thrift flipping, as well as doing some thrifted holiday decorating for a very exciting opportunity that I'll get to share soon. So we've got some fun in the chamber, okay? That's all I'm gonna say for now. Okay, actually two more, <laughs> two more things to say for now. I wanted to ask your opinion on some things. First, we're gonna talk about YouTube. Second, we're gonna talk about books. So I started my YouTube channel for many reasons, but one of them being I love YouTube. I watch it. <laughs> I'm a fangirl. And I'm curious to know who y'all are a fangirl of too. Who are your favorite comfort YouTubers? I'm trying to broaden my collection as we get into these cozy winter months where I'm just gonna be hibernating and living vicariously through random YouTube videos. So share them down in the comments. I'll say one of my absolute favorite creators recently is Allison Pages. She's been on YouTube for years. She makes not only bookish content, but it's like the comfiest, coziest vlog you've ever seen. I think she's hilarious. And I'm just gonna say it, I hope we, I hope we become friends someday. Also, I've been really into the Sad Boys podcast. I don't know if any of y'all listen to it or watch it. I prefer to watch, but I think Jarvis and Jordan are just gems of human beings. Highly recommend. Okay, now books. Yeah, I've been a book girly this year. I'm not gonna lie. I actually haven't counted up the number of books I've read, but I think it's, I think it's a lot. So over Halloween, I read a collection of spooky stories called Wounds. Wounds. Um, oh my gosh. Horrifying. In the best way. There's one that's about, um, ghoul children that rise up from a cemetery and overtake a carnival. There's one about, uh, some cockroaches. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. And there's one that's basically Pirates of the Caribbean, but make it cannibals. Highly recommend, not for the faint of heart, but really fun. Well, not fun, uh, good. I'll just say good. So then after I finished that collection of short stories, I saw that the author has another collection of short stories that are a little bit older called Lake Monsters of North America, I think. I should probably know what it's called. It's on the screen. I'm in the middle of reading it right now and it's basically the same thing as Wounds. It's short stories, but they're even shorter. They're almost like glimpses of a story that you kind of catch out of the air and are horrified by and release back into the ether. Uh, I will say that these are a lot more... Oh, well, they're filled with despair. I'll just say it. I'm also gonna say this. I'm not a huge fan of Junji Ito. I know. Don't get me wrong. I love the work. It's beautiful. It's scary, but I don't actually like reading it. Does anyone actually like reading it? It's so dismal. There's no no positive to the story, which I know is the point, but it's like, it's not a, it's not an easy read. It's not a fun read. And that's how these stories are. They're not easy or fun reads, but they do, they take you on a wild ride. I just read one about a vampire that lives in the crawl space beneath this kid's house. Bad, bad vibes. I mean, good story, bad vibes. Anyways, if you have any book recommendations, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. I love a spooky book. Oh, wait, how can I forget this? I just finished reading Project Hail Mary, which totally different side of the spectrum. It's by the same author who wrote The Martian, Andy Weir. And if you like a space odyssey, if you like problem solving, if you like space problem solving, potentially, well, I won't say anything else. What a wild romp through space with Earth hanging in the balance. Highly recommend. So back to my recommendation uh, request. If you have a space book, if you have a fantasy book, if you have a horror book that you have loved recently, throw it down in the comments. Actually, if you had any book you love recently, throw it down in the comments. I will admit I'm very picky when it comes to books and I'm pretty harsh when I don't like them, but it's not you, it's me, okay? Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Well, present me is gonna stop talking now. Past me is gonna start talking uh, right now. I think it needs a background. 
but I don't know what color to do. I'm thinking like a peachy, pinky, orangey. You know what you do when you're indecisive? You do it digitally. The lighting is kind of perfect right now. Maybe I should just get out of the frame and talk to you from over here. Well, what'd you think? This is where we landed with the final digital touches. As you can see, I couldn't help but to add a couple little paper collage texture details. It's kind of my signature move. I can't stop myself from doing it. I think it's pretty cute, but speaking of that, it might be a little too cute. Personally, I like my work to have a little bit more weirdness to it, more wobbliness and almost like a gritty edge to it. And with this color palette, it just feels super cute, which isn't a bad thing. It just feels a little bit like Pinterest circa 2017. You know what I mean? It's not a bad thing. It's just not really what I was going for. And I know I asked you a ton of questions during this video. What your dream estate sale would be? Have you been to an estate sale? Do you have any books or YouTubers to recommend to me? So don't forget to drop those answers down below. I'll be back next week, probably, with another creative, styly video. And if you had fun this week with me, then please feel free to subscribe so that you make sure you come back next time. If you want to hang out with me during the week, you can catch me on Instagram, Kathleen Illustrated, and I'm going to get out of here. I love you. You're stinky. Goodbye.